Hey, good afternoon. I see you in the building, Sabria. How you doing, sister? You are just so beautiful. Every time I see your picture on Facebook, I'm like, you are so beautiful. I know you get that all the time. But I just want to tell you today, if nobody's told you, you are gorgeous. You're gorgeous. Hey, Wari, how are you doing? I see you, Denise. Hey, Crystal, how are you doing? Blessings, Miriam. How are you doing? I pray that your weekend and your last, I don't know why I do that, and your last week was good. I feel like I'm yelling already. I don't want to do that. Hey, sister. So how was your last week? I missed you guys. Good evening. How are you? Miss Diane, I missed you guys. I missed you guys. I pray that there are tons of praise reports. I pray that there are tons and tons and tons and tons of praise reports. But if there isn't, it's okay. Because there's going to be tons and tons and tons and tons of praise reports this week. Yes. Where are you? Where are you? Hey, man. I wasn't in Atlanta for the hurricane. I was in California. I didn't think it, Atlanta got hit. I didn't. I didn't think Atlanta... And I heard South Georgia, how are you? I heard South Georgia was like, got super hit. Like, I was like, what? Good, how are you? Um, Hey, Mama Joyce. Hey, Megan. Tamar in the building. I see you guys. I thought I saw Adina. She may be hiding somewhere in the background. I love you, sister. I love you. I love you. I love you. Hey, Britt, Britt, how are you? Amen. Amen. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. The um What you better come on here, Ryan. You better come on. Do we pray for her vision? Y'all, we be praying so much on here. I'll be knowing what's happening. Oh, thank you, sister. <laughs> there you are. I thought I saw you, sister. I love you. I love you. I love you. Yes, I need to hear your voice. And Sharon's voice. Yes, I do. Yes, I just want to hear your voice. Hallelujah. Do we pray for her vision? I don't remember. I don't remember because if, if we did, I, mean, I don't know. But anywho, come on here. I'm so excited that her vision has been. Hey, Sandra. Y'all better come on here. All right. So it's the best week ever, but we are halfway into the first month of our consecration of God's consecration that he's allowing us to partake in. Let me change my verbiage. So if you got your pen and your paper, I just want to give a couple of like prophetic words. I want to pray some of Psalms 37 over you a little bit. I was going to pray the book. Um, this is the book, Irrevocable, Irrevocable. It's just Psalms 103 inside of prayers and decrees, but we're not going to do that. I think we're going to do Psalms 37 because there's a couple of verses that I wanted to amplify. Hey, Chastity, I love you. You guys lift up Chastity this week. Um, she had a death in her family. Hey, Tega. And so we're really lifting up her family right now. She's such a blessing to all of us. She's such a blessing to us. So please remember Chastity in your prayers um, and her whole family. Um, hey, Joe. Um, oh, I'm going to phone call. Anyway, um, yeah, thank you guys. Yeah, I really just pray for comfort and, and God's really got to use her, going to use her, but he has to use her in this um, sense. And so a lot of times when there's a death in the family, hey, sister, um, and God is saying, you're the one that has the word. You're the one that has the sound of prayer. You got to put your grief, your, your feelings kind of on the back burner for a little bit. And so we just want to really hold up her arms as God's really going to use her in this during this time frame for the people who are really grieving in her family so y'all just really pray her strength um especially you know she you got your own feelings and you've got your own you know what i'm saying so let's just keep her lifted we're really praying for we're starting we're really praying for um people who have lost people this year and even 2017 um hey man of god even 2017 you know the sting the pain especially of you lost a child or you lost a parent or you lost a spouse, like, it takes a minute. It takes a minute before the memory doesn't sting, right? And so we, we can never tell anybody how long to grieve. We know that there is proper grieving, but that's on the timetable of God. 
And so we just want to be a sound of prayer covering people who are grieving. And you don't need to know their names. Just begin to pray. Just begin to lift them up. Just begin to, you know, call for broken hearts before the Lord. That this will be a time of great comfort. Because there's a lot of people who are dreading, right? Hey, I didn't know Megan was on here. Sister, it's your birthday. Um, I, you know, we don't know, um, I forgot what I was going to say, Jesus, help me, help your girl. I'm tired a little bit, guys, so y'all don't have to bear with your sister, okay? Um, we don't, we, we can't say what the timetable of grief is, but we can be that, that wall of protection, right? So that people don't fall over into somewhere they're not supposed to be, right? Um, people dread this time of year. Uh, certainly if you're missing someone or there was a family tradition or something like that, um, and so we just want to be a wall. We don't need to know names. We don't need to know names. Just, just know by faith that when you pray in tongues, when you speak in tongues, even when you worship, thank you, Holy Spirit. Even when you worship guys, let your worship be the worship that of an intercessor. Amen. That when you worship and you begin to go in and you begin to weep and you begin to bless the Lord, begin to know that you are standing in the gap and you're worshiping for people who can't push it out. Right. We've all been there where we wanted, where we needed to worship, where we needed to tell the father I'm weak right now and I need you to be my strength. Amen. And strength is released in worship is when we take our eyes off of us and we put our eyes, our mind um, on the father, right? That's when we begin to get strengthened, but we're being fought so hard that we can't even get into that place. Release your sound for somebody who cannot. Amen. Amen. Release your worship for somebody who cannot release it. Even when you're getting revelation, come on guys, even when you're in prayer and you're getting revelation as an intercessor, receive that revelation for someone who cannot. Y'all hear me for some, everything about you, O oh, intercessor, everything, everything, use it as intercession. And so as you're sitting there and God is speaking to you and you're journaling or God is giving you dreams or God is giving you loosing revelation and dreams. Hey, sister, say when you I, I receive this for the people who cannot. I receive dreams and visions. Come on, guys. For people who cannot right now. Hey, sister, I who cannot right now because they're so uh, in uh, moaning. They're so in grief. You know what I'm saying? If this is making sense. And so I'll say this to you. We're already there. Um, I'll say this to you. If you want your revelation, are you taking notes? If you want your revelation to go to the next level, if you want your intercession, hey, sister, to go to the next level, I'm being serious. I'm not talking about so people can say, oh, you're great or oh, your name is great. Oh, no. Guys, hear me when I say this. Hear me when I say this. Who cares what people think about your, your ability to revelate, your ability to pray, your ability to pray? Who cares what they think? As long as God is pleased with what you do, who cares what they think? think if this is making sense. So who cares if people see, if people do, if people, who cares? Are y'all hearing me? If God is pleased, if God is pleased. And so if you want your prayer life, if you want your, um, hey sister, if you want your prophetic, if you want your dream of the Lord to go to the next level, I'm going to give you a key. And this for real, for real is a key. Right. When I'm dealing with people on how to begin to have intercession, right? And intercession is the heart of Jesus. Hey, doc, intercession is the heart of Jesus. And the heart of Jesus is always for people. When you pray for yourself, include people. Hey, man of God. You are not alone. You are not the only one who is going through what you're going through. And so a lot of times, I'm getting ready to flip the script on you in a minute. A lot of times we'll just pray for us. And God is saying, include people. Include people. Hey, sister, everybody that's going through this right now, everybody who's feeling this, this pressure right now, everybody who is feeling instability right now, everybody who's feeling lonely, and use those emotions that you're feeling. 
And so if you woke up in tears and you were crying, okay, God, for every person who woke up in tears this morning because they feel alone, for every person who woke up in tears this morning because they don't know where their children are and they're feeling like, and then fill in the blanks, how you feel and what you're experiencing, use that to begin to cover people. So what's going to happen is in a moment, you're getting ready to flip the script. And this is what I do for myself, right? I begin to pray for the people and then I understand that I'm included in that. So I will hear myself praying and I'll be praying for the people. I'll be praying for the people. And then, and then the Holy Spirit will be like, wait a minute. Yeah, they are, but I'm saying use them. They are, use them. Everything about you, make it pray. Everything about you, make it be used as a weapon or a missile. We've been getting ready to get there in a minute. Everything about you, don't let any tear, come on guys, be wasted. And so even if you have a temper tantrum in the spirit, use it for the people. When you come to yourself and the Holy Spirit is like, okay, scrape yourself up off the floor now. Begin to use it for the people. Don't just well for yourself. Well for everybody who feels like you. And so God, now I'm covering everybody who wants to throw a temper tantrum. I'm covering everybody who is, who is saying to you, um, God, I feel like you left me high and dry. I'm not alone. If this is making sense, right? Use everything about you to intercede. Everything. It's not just about me and I'm not the only one going through. And so if your business is going through, right? If your business is, take the symptoms. And as you pray the symptoms, pray it and begin to cover every other kingdom business that is experiencing the same thing that you're experiencing. When you are praying and you're like, you know what, God? Hey, sister, when you're like, um, um, God, I'm, ha I'm having dreams, but I can't remember what the dreams are. And you begin to lose warfare over your space. Now bring in everybody else. Bring in everybody else. Why? Because God is going to answer the intercessor. God is going to answer the intercessor. And so as you flip the script and you begin to pray and you're praying for people, you'll see that your stuff is mixed up in what God is pushing you to pray upon. So a lot of times you don't even got to pray your symptoms or your details. Because you understand that as God is pulling it out. And so what happens is, God, you'll see, you. I'll be releasing a prophetic word in prayer. I'll be releasing a prophetic word in prayer. I'll be releasing an apostolic blessing in prayer. And then I'll hear the Holy Spirit say, Isaiah 65 and 24 for your house too. Don't, don't let's not get it twisted. God is not mocked. God is not mocked. Hallelujah. And so what you sow, what you sow, especially, come on guys, what you sow when you take heaven and you plant it in the earth, when you take the decree of God and you plant it in the earth, God says, you too are hands of the harvest. You too shall harvest this blessing. <laughs> Hallelujah. If this is making sense. My God and glory. And so anyway, I just was saying, you know, um, for the rest of the year, and make a decision, make a decision that everything that happens include the people, include the people. This is going to teach you how to be an intercessor real quick. This is going to make your intercession go to the next level. God is going to begin to give you revelation, right? And so what will happen is you will even see when you take this on, you will even see that you will begin to have dreams to scale. You will begin to see into the realm of the future. You will begin to see two outcomes. You will begin to see the heart of God and it will be plain. God will speak to you plainly when you include the people because the people are the heart of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everything God does, he does for people. Everything God does, he does for his greatest creation. And so when you put it as my, your greatest creation is, is, is my heartbeat, it's my burden. Come on, guys. Jesus. It's going to be so easy to pray. It's going to be so easy to pray. And so if you're like, you know, you feel like you got a whole bunch of stuff going on in your life and you've been getting hit after hit after hit after hit, I promise you those hits are getting ready to stop when you begin to include the people. Why? Because the enemy is going to back up off of you because he sees that you pray and not just for yourself. You pray for the people. Let me do the robot on that. That's what your grandmama was doing before she got saved. I'm doing the robot on that. Are you getting this? 
And so now I'm not warring. I'm not, I'm not just warring for one. I'm warring for all. God is not the God of one. He's the God of all. So when I say bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, I'm bringing in the whole group. I'm bringing in the whole kingdom. I'm bringing in the whole earth. I'm bringing in all of the nations. I'm bringing in all of the sea. And so the enemy's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you praying like that? Stop it. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Because now I'm covering people who don't even know how to war. I'm covering lineages and lines that don't even know how to war. I'm covering people who are not even saved and they don't know how to war. And so now it's saying I'm taking a hit. But when I take a hit, everybody's coming out. <laughs> Hallelujah. I pray y'all see this. I pray y'all see this. Do y'all see? It's strategy. It's strategy. And so when you say, I want God to use me, I want God to use me, God use me. I'll go where you want me to go. And I'll say and I'll do. And God is saying, can I trust you in this simple place? Can I trust you in the simple place, which is very, very complex? Because what happens is either, you know, an intercessor will be hit so hard, you will lay down and shut up. And that's the worst thing you could do, right? But when you get hit after hit after hit after hit, and God is saying, if you will just get up one more time and include everybody in your symptoms, if you will include everybody in your warfare that is just like you, you ain't got to know their name. But there's a river. There's a river. When a missile, when a, an attack is launched, it is against an army, right? It is against a group of people. And so there's a, there's a weapon that has been released against business owners. There's a weapon that has been released against prophets. There's a weapon that has been released against apostles. There's a weapon that has been released against families. There's a weapon that ha y'all see this? And so you are in a grouping of a larger company. So let me not just pray about me. Let me pray about the whole company. Hey, sister. Right? Let me pray about the whole company. Let me pray about the whole platoon. Are y'all seeing this? If you see it as a people, soldiers on a field, right? When they're using their weapon, they're not saying I'm using my weapon to keep myself alive. I only I'm using my weapon to keep everybody on my left and my right and behind me alive. Pray for the whole company. Use your weapon for the whole company. Worship for the whole company. So your seed for the whole company. So your seed. So if you're taking notes, if you're taking notes, Anise, I, I don't, I don't know about this. Anise, Anise, you are representative of a group of people. You are in a company, but you are over a company too as well. You have a covenant, and that covenant is stretching and is far-reaching for people who don't know how or can't. And so God, as I release this time. I tie for every, for every spouse that is in a relationship and the other spouse don't want to tie. Intercessor. Intercessor. God, as I sow this seed, I, mean, I am sowing the seed for every person who, who only has lint in their hand, but they need a seed in the ground for them. I'm putting our seed in the ground. I'm putting our seed in the ground. I'm putting our seed in the ground. Are y'all seeing this? And so God is going to put more weight on you because he can trust you. And the enemy is going to be like, bruh, you tripping. You get up and you pray your dream. You intercede your dream. And it's not just about you. You begin to kick over evil altars for everybody that's connected to you. You begin to kick down and overthrow evil altars over everybody connected to you. Jesus. Is this making sense? And so I don't mean to yell at you. I just pray that you sit. So for the next, I don't know how many days we have left. 75 days? No. I don't know. 75 days? I don't know. Y'all count the days. For the next days that we have left on this consecration, let everything you do, let every decree you release be for the whole company. For the whole company. For the whole company. Is this making sense? Let everything you say be for the whole group or the whole company. There are people we call out names and they're intercessors. You know, that's your thing. You can name, you can, you got names, like you can name. I am not that person. I have people that I pray for my assignment, but they call out names. They remember Kathy at Walmart and aisle number eight. Like, do you boo? For the rest of us who don't, we not wired like that. You tap into the people that you are assigned to, that your whole life assignment, are you taking notes? 
that your whole life assignment is connected to. Is this biblical, Anise? When Jesus died on the cross, we were there. When Jesus was resurrected, we were there. When Jesus ascended, we were there. As Jesus is sitting on the right hand of the Father, guess who was there? We're seated in heavenly places. This is biblical, right? And so, thank you, sister, how to pray this. And so, I need you to listen. So, when you begin to pray, now I'm not just looking for names in the immediate. Names in the immediate, but God, the covenant that is attached to this assignment, that is attached to this providential will of you. People that you'll never know their names, places that you'll go that you didn't even see their face. I'm calling out their name through the groaning of the Holy Spirit. Make sense? Make sense? And so there are places that you are yet to go, that your feet have yet to go, that will touch other people. And you begin to stretch that prayer to cover people whose names you will never know. Never know. You will never know their name until you reach glory, ever. But a lot of times we like to land on the people that we know. We say the names of the people we go to church with, and that's cool. But what about the people who are connected to them that is underneath your covenant too? Hey, sister. Right? They have kids, and because the, your assignment is to cover them, you're also covering their children. You're covering their grandchildren. We got to begin to think, not global, globally. We have to begin to think kingdom 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 vision god is not the god of one he's the god of the whole and so every place that this purpose called the assignment called my life is supposed to touch i'm interceding for the whole i'm interceding for what i cannot see i'm interceding for names i will never know groan for them holy spirit groan for them holy spirit it's making sense and so for the next how many days we got left in 2018, make it your practice. And that as you worship, you are doing it for the whole. As you praise, you're doing it for the whole. As you tithe, which is worship, you're doing it for the whole. As you sow, you are doing it for the whole. As you decree, you're doing it for the whole. As you pray for your children, I'm praying for all of them. 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 So as I cover Israel, I'm covering little Johnny who lives in the corner of this subdivision whose parents are worshiping another God who are worshiping idolatry. I'm covering Johnny. Johnny will know God. Johnny will know God. As I pray for Israel, I am praying that Johnny's not going to get on drugs. I'm praying that Johnny's not going to get off track. I'm praying for the children if this is making sense. Hallelujah, if this is making sense. Because God has planted me here. Where you are, God has planted you. Where you are, God has planted you, Jesus. And so as I pray for one, I'm praying for the whole. You see this? It's a wall. That's what intercessors do. You know when moms be driving in the car? And that, that child is sitting next to you and you're about to make a, a real big stop and you sit, you, you put your arm out like that. You drive and you put your arm out and then you step on the brake. So your arm is a wall so that if you come up, my arm is right there so you don't get no whiplash. I'm holding you. I don't know what my arm going to do, but I'm holding you. Do you see this intercessor? This You got that block ministry, not that block of you blocking people, but that block ministry where my body is also a wall. Everything about me is filling in the gaps. I'm taking up space. I'm taking up space and we are making sure that there are no gaps. I'm, I'm taking up space, hallelujah, so that those who are behind us, <laughs> hallelujah, natural response. Come on, Mama Joyce. So let this be your natural response for the next 75 days. Everybody, everybody, if one can set a thousand to flight and two can set 10,000 to flight, I'm going to need you to set to flight. Everybody everybody hallelujah your prayers go further when we let them out of the box 
It is a spiritual thing. So God takes them and he, he, he puts momentum and he puts wind on them if this is making sense. I don't know what we're supposed to talk about tonight, but we done got on something else. That's making sense? So we just said that just to, yes, take your prayers out the box. Take your worship out the box. Take your praise out the box. Take your decrees out the box. I am a wall. Take it out the box. Come on, guys. Hallelujah. If Abraham, when he gave tithe, Levi gave tithe. God is God of all. God is setting up structure. God is setting up structure by what we do. Abraham didn't even know there was a Levi. Abraham didn't even know the purpose of a Levi. Abraham didn't know the calling of a Levi. He didn't know it. Is this making sense? So we got to come out of the box. We got to look at the scripture and we got to say, okay. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. All right. So I didn't mean to yell at y'all. I didn't mean to yell at y'all. But now that we're talking about walls. So uh, Nehemiah chapter four. Um, if you want to run there, you can, but you don't have to. Um, on Saturday, this is what we talked about. Broken or the, it's up there, and I've only put it up there, so if you wanted to go back and watch it and all that good stuff. But anyway, the Lord took it in another direction, but I wanted to leave a couple of pieces with you guys for this week so that you can understand, you can understand the, the tactics and the strategy of the enemy, especially in this day. So I just gave you one key, right? When we talk about being a builder, Right. When we talk about being a builder, the strategy was they were positioned. Y'all know the story of Nehemiah. The strategy is they were positioned in a certain position. Those who were doing the building so that where they were building, it will be fortified because what behind what was behind them mattered to them, the builder in that moment. But in the larger context, the strategy was if everybody is building in front of what matters most, this is going to be a very fortified wall. It's going to be a very fortified wall. And so if you have been living in the first 15 days of this consecration, the enemy has been showing you pictures. You can raise your hand if you want. Let me just talk about me. The, en the enemy has been fighting you with pictures, with pictures of broken things, broken places, broken spaces, and breaches in the wall, breaches in fortification, right? And those pictures are to produce a particular emotion. That emotion is to get you off kilter. That emotion is to get you sunken in a sunken place and not in an elevated place of prayer, right? In an elevated place of prayer. Number one, the enemy would not be coming showing you these pictures if God had not released another picture of momentum that is attached to your building. You are a builder. You are a builder. And there is a blessing upon the builder. And that is God is watching the builder. The builder comes, hallelujah, to do the work of the sovereign. The building comes, the builder comes with the calling of building. Hallelujah. So the enemy is not going to come and mess with you if, if he does not see the momentum of glory being released. Don't get into, I feel like I'm having to fight a little bit more. I feel like last week I just had to war. I, it just seems like since this consecration, it's been a little bit more. It's been a little bit more arduous. I've had to this, that, and the other. You're on the right track. You're on the right track. You're on the right track. So if we look at, come on guys, when we look at Nehemiah, I need you to read at least the first five, six, the whole book. Okay. When we look at Nehemiah, right, they came and they never, come on guys. They never, the enemy never punched the wall. The enemy never kicked over the wall. The enemy never set fire to the wall that they were building. They came and they did mental warfare. If they're building a wall, come on. In Nehemiah chapter 4, I don't know, around maybe verse 17, verse 14. They said, it says, uh, don't quote me on that. That's Nehemiah chapter 4. You're just going to have to read it. Anyway, Nehemiah chapter 4, it says that when they heard that they were filling the breaches, they were very wroth. They were very angry. Why not go and kick the wall over? If you're so angry, you're so wroth, why not in the middle of the night set fire to the wall? Even though they had a watch and they were still building, they built, they were building day and night. They were building day. Why not go and sabotage the wall? But come on, let's be critical thinkers. 
Why not go and sabotage the wall? They never sabotage the wall. They always went to the people who had the assignment to build the wall. Because if I can convince you that you are broken and you're not building, that whatever you're building will always be broken because the hands that built it are broken, then you will not build what you're supposed to build fortified. So they could sabotage themselves. So it was a mental warfare. How do we do mental warfare? We hold up pictures. That's how we do mental warfare. We create words and words create pictures. And we put these pictures before them trying to convince them that you will always be broken. Your hands will always be feeble. You will not have no strength. And therefore your wall will never come together. <laughs> Hallelujah. If this is making sense. I need you to understand, why are they so scared about this wall? Why is the enemy so scared about this thing that you are building, about this, for this season of fortification? Why is the enemy coming? Do you understand that these 90 days we are building a wall? Yes, we are. We are building a wall, oh intercessors. That's what intercessors do. We are building a wall. We're not gap dwellers. We are gap builders. builders. We are gap Fillers. We are not gap dwellers. We do not dwell in the gaps. We build in the gaps. We build in the gaps. We build in the gaps and move on. You build and move. You build and move. You don't dwell. You don't sit. You don't pitch a tent in a hole in a gap. No, you build. You fortify. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I just want to release this. The wall, of course, we understand wall for a city is strength and fortification. Right? If there is no wall, you're, you can't do anything. If there is no wall, you cannot build anything. If there is no wall, you cannot plant anything. If there is no wall, there is no safety. If there is no wall, you will always, you can just come in and rape and pillage and burn all the time. Your wall is your defense. It is your fortification. And so the father said, the father said, if these three, if these three things hit home for you, I need you to understand you are not broken in these three areas. You are building in these three areas over the next 90 days. Stability, prosperity, and legacy. That's what the wall uh, it represents. Stability, prosperity, and legacy. Right. If we don't have any wall, we can never do anything long term because any enemy can run by any animal can come in and snatch our chickens and snatch our kids. Anybody could come in and set fire to the village and take the women and take the children. If, if, we, if there is no wall, there can never be any stability in God's sense. Those of us who have been praying and saying, God, stability, it just seems like, it just seems like, it just seems like the father is saying, no, 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 baby, you understand that your stability is being, is under construction right now. We are constructing a wall that is stable. Your stability, you're going to be able to plant. You're going to be able to grow. You're going to be able to build. You're going to be able to have family and nothing's going to be able to come in and disturb the ecosystem. It's making sense. It's making sense. And so there will not be cycles of instability because there are gaps in the wall or the wall is burned. We understand in Nehemiah chapter two, the wall was burned in Nehemiah chapter four. They say again, the wall is burned. The wall was burned and broken. It was burned. They had no, there was nothing they could do. They were sitting ducks. There was nothing they could do. Is this making sense? All right. So number one, in order for me, y'all see, I need y'all see how this builds upon it. So number one, the first layer is stability. That will be your foundation. We cannot have number two, prosperity, where there is no stability. We cannot have a place of nothing missing, nothing broken, and nothing lacking if there isn't a, a foundation that is immovable. If there's not a foundation that cannot be penetrated, we cannot have it. Oh God, where's my prosperity? You're the God of prosperity. You're God that gave me, I don't know why you're talking like that. You're the God that, cause you, your strength is small right now. <laughs> you're the God who said, hallelujah, hey sister, you're the God who said that you've given us the power to get well. 
wealth is a part of prosperity and it's not the whole piece of prosperity. It's just a part of prosperity. And so the father was saying, I am fixing the stable components. You have been wanting prosperity without stability. And the stability of character, stability of mind, stability of prayer. Come on, guys. Stability of organization, stability of, of, of efficacy. Every time I tell you something to do, you fall into this, can I do it? Efficacy, meaning efficacy. Do you think you can do what you're doing? Efficacy. If you do not think you can do it, you will not do it. Where there is no efficacy, there will not be any stability. Where there is no stability, there will not be any prosperity. Nothing missing, says the Father. Nothing broken, says the Father. And nothing lacking. Lack deal with wealth. Lack deal with resources. But what about the missing and the brokenness? We cannot experience this if your joy is broken. What, what, what do you want me to spell? What do you want me to spell? You cannot, you, are you talking about prosperity? Are you saying prosperity? Prosperity. Am I, am I talking too fast, guys? I'm sorry. I'll calm down. <laughs> you can, is this making sense? And so we've been, pro, oh, thank you, sister. I have moved on to something else, y'all. Yeah, efficacy. There you go. Efficacy. There is deep studies on efficacy for every genre, especially education. That is a huge word, that is a huge catch word for teachers and students alike because it's learning, it's learning, right? And so we have in the church, we I'm sorry sister, we've been praying for prosperity, but we've left out stability. A city with no walls. I don't know what you're doing, Siri. You know? Okay, Siri, she's doing her thing. What are you doing, Siri? Anyway, so Siri wanted to join in. Anyway, so I pray this is making sense. So we just skipped right over the brokenness in our lineage. I don't know about you, but my lineage handed me a broken mentality. The church is handing me prosperity, but my lineage handed me instability. instability fake it till you make it doing all these things for all the wrong reasons so now the prosperity that God is trying to hand me it is tainted because there is no stability so now my motive for moving in the power to get wealth is to cover is to fill in the gaps as to fill in the breaches in the foundation. And God says, no, they're layered one upon the other. And you cannot reach the fullness. You cannot live in the fullness if one of the layers is cracked or broken. And so could it have been when we were in 5778, when we were in 5777, sorry, 5777, that the father was saying, I was releasing you from the snare of instability. I was releasing you from the snare of the broken foundation. I was releasing you from the slavery and the bondage to the cyclical nature of instability that's been handed to you and it looks normal to you. And it's normal to you to have low self-esteem. It's normal to you to question, can you, will you, or do you? It's normal to you. And the father is saying, I needed you to put on my lineage and forsake your own. You are always looking at where you came from and not looking for looking at where you came from. You came from me. You came from my loins. You came from my heart. You came from my mind. You came from my hand. But you're always looking at the lineage you came from. And so in 5777, I'm releasing you from that lineage. I'm releasing you from that thought pattern because it was broken. So 5778, I begin to position you to begin to understand. It is time to begin to build stability in the wholeness of the lineage, in the wholeness of my thinking, in the wholeness of all of my patterns. I pray this is making sense, right? Nothing missing, nothing lacking, or nothing broken. It lays upon, come on guys, it lays upon the sturdy foundation of stability. And so then the last layer, 
And the most glorious layer is the layer of legacy. And the father is saying you cannot have legacy without prosperity. You cannot leave a legacy with something is broken. If something is missing or if something is lacking and you cannot have that prosperity if, the, if there is instability in the foundation that holds all three of these up. If this is making sense. So the enemy is coming and he's fighting. He's showing you pictures of your legacy and he's saying your legacy and where you came from is trash. Like this is ridiculous. Do you see? He's showing you pictures and he's saying your credit is broken. Your mind is broken. Your prayer life is broken. And he's coming to, do y'all see this? The foundation of your stability. And he's saying, you know what? You do things and then you don't do things. And you all over the place. And look at how you think about yourself. And look about how the broken people that are in your life. And, and if you lay down with dogs, you get up with fleas. So clearly you the dog of instability. Come on, guys. When you begin to assess your relationships and you're like, why do all these people come around me and they all look broken? And you're saying, well, it must be that the broken people come around me because I'm broken. And God is saying, no, the broken people are coming around you because you are the builder. You are the one to teach them how to build brick upon brick. You are the one that has the breaker anointing for instability. God is saying, if you will pay attention to the blueprint, if you will pay attention to what I'm doing, if you will, let me, Jesus, if you will pay attention, hallelujah, if you will just pay attention to the methodology of where I'm bringing you to and stop belly aching, but if you would sit yourself down in the process, you would see I'm bringing people to you, I'm bringing people to you, and you're going to teach them how to build. 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 You're going to teach them how to break off of themselves. This, I am, I am inherently broken and I will be broken forever. That I will build something good, but I will be broken because I did this. I will be broken. This will never leave me. This will always be a part of me. This will always be a part of the legacy. And God is saying, no, boo-boo baby, you need to understand that this brick is pristine because I've caused all things to work together for your good. And so the brokenness, hallelujah, I am near to, I am near, I am near that, hallelujah. And when you give me those pieces, come on, Potter, I squish it, I break your brokenness, I put it back on the wheel, and I cause it to be made something that is providential, that thing that I was always intended to use. My name is sovereign, says the Father, and I knew what you was going to do before you was even going to do it, and I released you into you a particular lineage so that you could go. Go back and strengthen the brethren. I pray y'all see this. Why, oh, why did God cause you to be birthed in that broken family? Because God is saying that once you've been converted, you are to strengthen the lineage. Once you've been converted, you are to strengthen the family. Why was I born? Why did I have to? Why? Why? Oh, why? Oh, why? God is saying because you're the one. You're the one, oh builder. You're the one. You're the, come on. You're the one. You're the one. I need you to see what I am doing. I need you to see your placement. I need you to see your placement in my purpose. I need you to see your potential in the placement of my purpose. Hallelujah. The father is saying, all I need is one. One can set a thousand to flight. All I need is one to stand in the lineage and to tag another one. And then two can set 10,000 to flight. And so the father is saying, Come, are y'all seeing this? Are y'all seeing this? That the instability that we've known, the disadvantage that we've known, he says, I've got a remedy for that. I've got a remedy for that. It's called the blood of Jesus, the person of Jesus, the death of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus, the ascension of Jesus, and the sitting of Jesus, that he has scrubbed the seat and boo-boo baby. In him you live, in him you move, and in him you have your very being. And so now you too have been scrubbed clean. You too, are y'all seeing this? You too, you too, you too. Now go and stand in your lineage and begin to scrub the lineage. Begin to scrub the walls of the lineage. Begin to scrub the dirt and the grime begin to cause her to be deliverance in the lineage in the name of Jesus. I pray y'all see this. I pray y'all see this. And so the father is saying that the enemy is messing with you. He's messing with you through these 90 days, holding up pictures of places that you were and not places that are now. And he's trying to get in your emotions. So you'd be like, I don't know. I don't know if I can write the book. I don't know if I can start the business because you efficacy. 
efficacy, efficacy. So now I don't have efficacy in me. I have efficacy in the God in me. I have efficacy in the name of Jesus that is in me. Greater is he. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me. So I ain't got to deal with me. I'm dealing with the him that is in me. What he's put in me to produce him. So my efficacy is not in me. My efficacy is in him. I am in the lineage of him. So I'm pulling from his acumen. I'm pulling from his uh, inspiration. I'm pulling from his intellect. Greater, 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 greater. Are y'all seeing this? And so when the enemy, he comes with you and he's holding up a picture and he's saying, can you do it? Remember the last time you tried to do it? Remember the last time you tried? How many um, books that, that are you have never finished? How many books are sitting on your drive? How many businesses have you started and you have failed at? How many, how many? Well, this time, baby. This time. I'm not doing it in my own strength. I'm not doing it in my own mind. I'm not doing it for my own purpose. I'm not doing it for my own wealth. I am doing it as an intercessor. I am doing it as one who builds the wall. This business, this book, this what God has told me to do. I am building a wall. I am building a wall. This ain't about me. This ain't about my bank account. This is about kingdom come and kingdom done. So I'm holding up a picture, my God, of the providential will of God. And I'm saying fight against that. Fight against the plan of God. Can any of the plans of God be thwarted? This is the plan of God. I am the plan of God. This business is the plan of God. Can any of the plans of God be thwarted? Hallelujah, let me calm down. Hallelujah, I pray y'all see this this time, this time, this time. So when the enemy, he comes to fight against you, he comes to fight against your mind, he begins to fight against your mind because he's fighting against your hands. If I fight against your mind and I make your mind feeble, then your hands become feeble. Your hands become feeble. Let this mind that was in Christ Jesus, permit, allow, the mind that was in Jesus be in me. Oh, no, not this time, baby. Not this time. I am building with the mind of Jesus. I am building with the heart of Jesus, and I'm building with the hands of Jesus. We have been fortified. You have been fortified. My God, I pray you see this. You're walking out of 2018, three layers deep. Stability prosperity, and legacy. Where your family has never left a legacy, a good legacy, a good name. Father is saying, stability, prosperity, and legacy. And not the legacy of man, but the legacy of kingdom. Hallelujah. I pray y'all see this. I pray y'all see this. And so lastly, there's a bunch, but I'm not going to do that because we've already been on for a minute. Lastly, I want to say this. The, I, released it on the, I released it on the thing, but I want to pray it for you. I want to pray it upon you. I want to say it's like Nehemiah 4, 13, 14, 15, 16. That's all of them. Right? And it's talking about how the, the strategy of building. The strategy of building. Nehemiah, if you, li if you read the prayers of Nehemiah in Nehemiah chapter 4, you hear this sound, this same sound, where it's not about us, it's about you. So we move out of the way and we get up under your shadow. And so now, God, you will fight for us. You will fight for us. Nehemiah even says, if we have to fight, I'm going to blow the trumpet because the dude with the trumpet... Because he said the, the work is very great. Nehemiah chapter 4, he says the work is very great and we are spread out. And so when you hear the trumpet, assemble yourselves and God will fight for us. He doesn't say we will fight. He says, and God will fight for us. But the Bible says that, that, they, that they built with one hand and in the other hand, they had a weapon. And in Young's literal translation, how this word weapon in Hebrew is transliterated, literally translated, right? That word weapon means missile. That word weapon means missile. And so the father says, your work, your work. Your work, everything that you're doing, your work in the spirit realm, your work in the natural realm, every piece of work that you do, your work, which is your warfare, your work is going to be launched. And when it lands, it is going to be lethal because it's a missile. 
your work, what you've been doing, your work, how you've been warring, how you've been standing, how you've been being, how you've been be becoming. And it didn't look like there was a whole lot of fruit. It didn't look like you was gaining a whole lot of traction. Come on, guys. Even your fasting, the Father is saying, I'm getting ready to launch everything about you. And when it lands, when your prayers land, when your worship lands, when your work lands, when your book lands, when your business lands, when it lands, it is going to be lethal. Hallelujah. You're getting ready to have a wall of Jericho experience. You are invading the land, but what is in front of you? The father is saying that your work, which is obedience, your worship, which is obedience, you are getting ready to experience a wall of Jericho moment. You're getting ready to see the wall that is before you that won't let you fully enter in the wall that stands, the wall of the enemy. If God got a wall, the enemy got a wall. Come on, guys. And so the father is saying that I'm building your wall, but here's the thing, as you invade the land, the walls that look impenetrable, the things that look so big, the things that would keep you out, the systems of the demonic that have been messing with your mind, he says your obedience is going to land like a missile and the wall is going to lay down flat. Hallelujah. You're crossing over into 2019 in a whole new cycle with a whole new fortification. So the father is saying on this first day of this week, we are halfway through the first month. The father is saying, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. You have to understand you are not broken, but you are building child. Keep building brick upon brick, prayer upon prayer, worship upon worship, song upon song and work upon work. Hallelujah, that I'm launching what you're doing. And when it lands, it is going to be lethal. You need to take your prayers out of the box. You need to take your worship out of the box. And you need to understand that when you shoot, it is lethal. It is not a bow and an arrow anymore. The Bible said missile. Young's literal translation, like a missile. They didn't have missiles back then. They didn't even have missiles like a missile. I need y'all to see this. Like a missile. And so now when you go to pray, now as you fast, now as you decree, I need you to see that what I'm saying is getting ready to land. Think about this. So you launch a missile, right? Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this analogy. So when you launch, it doesn't land right away. The better the missile the longer the launch. So we launch and we're expecting to see an explosion right away. And God is saying, give it time. 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 You have no idea how far reaching. I need y'all to see this. This, your work is going. How far reaching your worship is. So you, you launch it, right? And you like the next day and God is saying, no, I would not have it fall 500 feet. I'm having it fall 500 years. You have, and everything behind it is going to come tumbling down. Every system connected to it is going to come tumbling down. And so, Father, we take our prayers out of the box. We take our worship out of the box. We take you out of the box because we don't pray by our own might. We pray by the might of you, not by power nor by might. Our trust is not even in our own prayers. Our trust is not even in our own worship. We don't know how we ought to pray, but it's the spirit of the living God that makes groaning for us. That makes sounds for us. That moans for us. Hallelujah. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we say it is by your power. It is by your strength. It is by your spirit that we enter in this time where you are building us three levels deep. Where you are fortifying the lineage. Where you are fortifying the regions. Where you are fortifying the territory. Where you are ultimately fortifying the kingdom. Thank you, Father, that as we, the body, as we, the kingdom, as we, the people, cross over, there's going to be a different sound. There's going to be a a different taste. There's going to be a different smell that is attached to the kingdom in 2019 in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so Father, we commit that as we pray, as we go, as we move, as we work, as we worship, as we sow, as we give, that we're doing it for the whole, that we are building the wall three layers deep. Come here stability and rest. Come here prosperity and rest. Come here legacy and rest in the name of Jesus. The legacy of the kingdom is no longer going to be damaged. The legacy of the people of God is no longer going to be one of shame. The legacy of the kingdom of God is going to be the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the person of Jesus, only in the name of Jesus. No longer will uh, what the name and the reputation of being a Christian be attached to slander and gossip and craziness and ugliness, but it will be the person of Jesus. 
Hallelujah. And so we just decree and declare that this is the best week ever, that we're entering in a season and a time of reformation. Revelation brings reformation. Information pulls us into revelation, and revelation brings reformation. And so we decree that this is the week of reformation. Reformation in the person, reformation in the mind, reformation in the mouth, reformation in the lineage, reformation, 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 reformation in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. This is a week of reformation. This is a week where the revelation where you brought us in and now we're getting ready to see reformation, reforming, reformation, reformation, reformation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so God, what we've been fighting against, the enemy's been fighting against us. The enemy's been showing us a picture of us. The enemy's been trying to entangle our mind to war back and forth with him. We move out of the way and we say, King of glory. Oh, we say to you, King of glory, the one who is sovereign, the one who is called for a sovereign reformation, who the one who is calling for a coup d'etat in the regions. Oh God, see, see, see and be wroth with the one who is committing treason against you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Overthrow the plans of the enemy. Overthrow. Oh, sovereign. I see. Notice I'm not dealing with the devil. I'm not dealing with the. I'm saying I'm worshiping. I'm in the place of worship. And my worship is a missile. And so I'm saying to the King of glory, you're the one that called for reformation. You're the one that called for the revelation. You're the one that gave the information. And so, so there is something coming against the builders. There's a sound that is coming against the mind of the builders to come against the hand of the builders to cause us to be feeble but since God we're in you there's nothing feeble about us in the name of Jesus hallelujah and so I decree and declare reformation to your prayer life reformation to your study reformation reformation to your revelation reformation to your dreams reformation there's nothing feeble about you there's nothing feeble about you there's nothing feeble coming out of you there's nothing feeble about you that you produce reformation 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 this week for you in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. And may you see with your own eyes because you'll see through the mind of Jesus. Reformation. Reformation has come. Reformation has come. The reform has come. Come on, government. We're in a season of, of voting. Why do you think voting is this time of the year? Why do you think voting is so we put out of office in the spirit realm? We put out of office in the spirit realm a government that is not of the order of God, a government that will be of a government of demonic and what that which would be of darkness. And we decree and set up, hallelujah, a government of God, kingdom, Jehovah, Adonai, reformation. Hallelujah. And this sound shall reach into November. This sound shall reach into November. This sound shall reach into November. Reformation over the nation. Reformation over the cities. Reformation over the towns. Reformation because there is a sound of a people who are decreeing God reformation because we are building not for us. We are building for the people. Hallelujah. And so, Father, we thank you for giving us another week. Thank you for giving us another moment. Thank you for giving us another day. Thank you for giving us another shot. Thank you for giving us another try in the name of Jesus. Reformation. 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 Hallelujah. And for anybody on here who felt like, you know, my prayers are so small, my prayers are so little, nothing's happening. When I'm praying, my prayers are hitting the ceiling. I am just one. We decree and declare that you are one, but you're covered by the one. You are one, but you are covered by the one. You are one, but you are covered by the one. You are one, but you are covered by the sovereign one. You are one, but you are covered by the one. Theos, one. Hallelujah. You're covered by God. You're covered by God. You're covered by God. And so if you're covered by God, if God is the one that is moving you, if God is the one that is pushing prayer out of you, if God is the one that is calling worship out of you, baby, you're sound. You're sound. Your sound is big. Your sound is huge. Your sound is the sound of reformation. 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 And so last week, Father, if anybody on here, their joy was pillaged, their laughter was pillaged, their days were pillaged. As an intercessor, I stand in the court of heaven and lay hold to the thief 
and I petition the court. I petition the court that their joy, their joy, their joy that was lost last week be ye returned and restored. You will have joy on this consecration. You will move in joy in this consecration. The joy of the Lord is your strength and you will move in the strength of God in this consecration. You will not be weak and you will not be feeble. Hallelujah. And so anything that was lost last week, we thank you, Father, for restoration inside of the Reformation. Any pieces of revelation that were overlooked, restoration inside of the Reformation. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, that not only is this the best week ever, but this is the most joyous time for people who have never known pure joy. I stand in the gap. And build that brick of stability of joy. Your joy will be stable. You will not be highs and lows. You will not be, oh, I'm happy, I'm sad. I'm No, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Joy comes standard with the Holy Spirit. Grown, grown person of the Holy Spirit. That your joy will be made full in your people. That your joy will be, will, will be made full in your people. Joy, be stable in the people of God who are participating in this 90-day consecration. Joy, joy, joy in your home. Joy in your members. Joy in your mind. Joy in your mouth. Joy in your belly. The joy of the Holy Spirit. You will not be depressed. You will not be decompressed. You will not be oppressed. Joy. 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 And so, Father, I even petition for your lineages. Where your lineages have been depressed. Where your mama and your grandmama and your granddaddy and every, your sisters and your brothers, they're not, not happy. They don't know joy. Up and down and up. They don't know joy. So we stand now in your lineage sturdy. One can set a thousand to flight. We stand and we decree the person of the Holy Spirit. The person, I need y'all catch this, of the Holy Spirit. Joy is not a thing. Joy is him. Joy comes standard with him. And so we loose Holy Spirit. We loose Holy Spirit. And every door and every word and every curse that would come to quench Holy Spirit. Be ye knocked down, be ye rooted out, be ye rut over, be ye evicted, and you are decreed and declared to be improper and unlawful. Not today. Not today. And a day into the Lord is as a thousand years. And a thousand years is as, a, as of a day. Not today. Do y'all see what I just did? Not, I'm not talking about 24 hour increments. What the day means to God. What the day means to God. The one who's not governed by time. It's a new day. What today. What that word today means to God. Not today. Today is the day that joy is in the line. That joy. Hallelujah. And so, Father, we just bless you and praise you for the sound of reformation and revelation. We thank you for stability, prosperity, and legacy. Stability, prosperity, and legacy. Stability, prosperity, and legacy. In the name of Jesus, we decree it. We decide it is already established. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So I love you guys. I love you. I love you. I love you. We'll be on tomorrow. I'm excited for you. Get excited. Every day have the expectation. Thank you, sister. Every day we're going to have the expectation 
that you're going to be excited. Every day, get up with the expectation that your, your joy is on fleek, like your joy is on overflow, like your joy is like cup running over, like your joy is just leaking. You're leaking joy, baby. You're leaking joy. Every day, get up and know you're leaking Holy Spirit. You're dropping Holy out of your belly flows, rivers of Holy Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, guys. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. And happy new week. And it's the best week ever. Amen. Amen.